Hello everyone, welcome back. So we will uh, continue the discussion on uh, sensors. In the last uh, lecture, we discussed about a uh, few uh, sensors which are very commonly used for data reckoning of uh, mobile robots. We talked about the uh, optical encoders which are used for uh, position sensing as well as the RPM uh, sensing in order to uh, identify the distance traveled by the robot using the uh, encoder. And we also talked about the uh, heading sensors, the compass and the gyroscope. And we talked about how the gyroscopes are uh, constructed, the mechanical uh, construction of gyroscope and the MAMS based gyroscope also uh, we discussed. So, in this lecture, we look at a uh, few other sensors which are again very commonly used and which are uh, most likely familiar to you also. So, we look at the, uh, the first one we will uh, look today is the accelerometer. Accelerometer is a very commonly used sensor, uh, it is not only for mobile robots, nowadays you will see that uh, uh, very small uh, size my, uh, accelerometers are there in a uh, lot of electronic devices, even your mobile phone will be having an accelerometer your laptops are having accelerometers nowadays in order to protect it from uh, sudden fall and then uh, consequent damages. So, it has become a very uh, commonly used uh, sensor. It is basically a proprioceptive sensor in the uh, uh, mobile robots because it tries to find out the internal velocity of the robots through by measurement of acceleration. And the mechanical accelerometers, which are the, the oldest type of accelerometer, they are like, like a spring, spring mass damper system. As you can see here in this uh, uh, diagram, there is a, a proof mass which is uh, suspended using a, a spring, or there are two springs, uh, which are uh, which is actually uh, the, the spring, uh, the sprung mass or the proof mass is suspended between these two springs. And then, whenever there is an acceleration of the uh, body, or the, the whole system, there will be a displacement of the mass. And uh, as you know, F is equal to MA, so whatever the force acting on the system will cause it to accelerate. And that acceleration it, it can be uh, measured as a, a, a displacement of the mass. So, the displacement of the mass is uh, uh, proportional to the acceleration, and therefore, by measuring the displacement, you will be able to get the acceleration of the body. So, that is the basic principle of. Uh, a uh, spring mass uh, uh, based uh, accelerometer. And uh, you, we have this uh, MEMS based one also, uh, MEMS based is the micro electromechanical system. So, they are actually cantilevered beam with a, a proof mass in a gas sealed device. So, again uh, the principle is almost the same, but the mass is cantilevered and then uh, it is uh, kept in, a, kept in a, a gas sealed device. So, any displacement of this mass uh, is a, a measure of the acceleration of the body. So, that is the uh, principle of uh, MEMS based um, accelerometers. And uh, the capacity or piezoelectric uh, principle is used for the proof mass displacement measurement. So, how do you measure the displacement of the mass? You can actually use a capacitive principle or an inductive uh, piezoelectric uh, principle to measure the uh, displacement and that displacement because the displacement is very small you cannot uh, measure it uh, using uh, direct method. So, you need to go for an indirect method of capacity uh, change of capacitance or some piezoelectric effects uh, because of the change in the position of the mass. So, that can be used for measuring the uh, displacement. So, and then this displacement can be a uh, measure of the acceleration. So, that is the basic principle of the accelerometers. So, the, the mechanical type accelerometer which is basically the uh, the spring mass uh, damper system. It will be uh, like this with a uh, big size compared to the current generation of uh, MEMS based accelerometers which are very small in size. You can actually see it in a chip and uh, the principle is uh, uh, this one which is the cantilevered beep with a proof mass in a gas sealed device. That is the, the principle of uh, accelerometer. Now, coming to the inertial measurement unit which is the uh, commonly used uh, uh, device or di uh, sensor in uh, most of the uh, robotic devices and mobile systems, which actually uh, consists of a combination of gyroscopes and accelerometers. So, we know that uh, accelerometers actually measures the velocity and gyroscopes can actually give you the 
uh, orientation or the rate of change of orientation. So, together these two, so accelerometers by measuring the acceleration you can get the velocity and uh, by knowing the velocity you can actually calculate the uh, position by integrating the velocity. Similarly, the gyroscope will give you the orientation or rate of change of orientation. So, together these two will provide you the complete uh, pose of the robot that is the position and orientation of the robot can actually be obtained using this device and that is the inertial measurement unit or IMU. All the robots nowadays use uh, IMUs and uh, as I mentioned not only for the uh, robot there are many other uh, systems which use IMUs for getting the position and orientation variation or changes in the position and orientation uh, as the time progresses. So, sometimes it is known as INS inertial navigation system ok. So, all the inertial navigation system basically consists of IMUs inertial measurement units. And that gives you the 6 degree or degree of freedom pose of the vehicle that is you can get the x y z position as well as the orientation roll pitch yaw can be obtained uh, using this IMU simply by measuring the acceleration as well as measuring, uh, getting the orientation uh, using the gyroscopes. And as you can see here, so this is a, this is a uh, IMU which is commercially available one. So, you can see the axes are marked here. So, there will be uh, accelerometers in all the three axes, if it is a three axis uh, measurement system and then you will be having accelerometers and gyroscopes in all the three axes. So, the uh, change in acceleration in one in a particular axis and the change in orientation with respect to the particular axis can actually be obtained using this kind of a uh, device. So, you place this on the robot and uh, align the axis of the robot with the IMU axis then you will be able to get all the uh, accelerations as well as change in orientations and you will be able to process it and get it get that done. So, the internal chip uh, will be something like this of course, you can have different ways of arranging it. So, you can see that the gyroscopes are there then the additional magnetic field centers also will be there and then you have the accelerometers ok. And there will be uh, the chips for process processing these uh, signals. And finally, you the using an USB interface, you can connect this to your computer and then measure uh, get the data directly from the uh, PCB. As you can see here, there is a rate gyroscope and accelerometer. And then in rate, uh, rate gyroscope, you integrate, you get the orientations and then you transform it to the local navigational frame ok. That is basically if you have a change in the coordinate uh, frames, you can actually uh, uh, transform it using the coordinate frame transformation. And then uh, accelerometer will give you all the accelerations and then you subtract gravity from vertical acceleration because always there will be this uh, gravitation uh, acceleration will be acting on the uh, sensor. So, you subtract that to get the acceleration along the uh, direction of the vertical axis. And if you know the initial velocity and the initial position, you will be able to integrate the velocity and the get the position by integrating the uh, uh, velocity uh, information. So, you have the position and you have the orientation also. So, the position and orientation can be obtained using the inertial measurement units. And this is an important uh, uh, sensor uh, used in all the mobile robots. Of course, drift is a fundamental uh, problem with IMUs. It is mainly because of the uh, integration that you are doing. So, you are actually getting acceleration signals and then you are integrating the acceleration signal to get the velocity and then again integrating the velocity to the to get the position. So, any small error in the acceleration will actually project it as a small, uh, big error in the position estimate. And this integration uh, of uh, errors will actually lead to uh, large drift. So, you cannot use it for a, a very long uh, duration measurements, but for short duration measurements it is a very good one and that becomes a very uh, basic measurement unit in any robot. So, as I mentioned uh, you cannot really use only one sensor, many times you may have to use additional sensors to correct the uh, drift error in uh, such sensors. Okay, now how, how do we actually uh, place this uh, uh, inertial uh, sensors? So, there are two ways of doing it, one is uh, by placing the placing the sensors the sensor on a gimbaled inertial platform. Uh, this is the, where uh, you identify the uh, 
orientation of the uh, sorry identify the axis of the robot and then uh, you you have a inertial uh, uh, coordinate frame also so you have a fixed frame and a mobile frame so you want to know the position of the robot with respect to a, a fixed frame so you fix this as an inertial frame and then you have a robot which will be having a, a frame of its own okay so this is the frame of its own now all the measurements are with respect to the robot frame so you have the robot frame and then if you place an accelerometer in this axis and in this axis each one of these axis what you are measuring is the acceleration along this axis and the acceleration along this axis what we are interested is to get the position with respect to the uh, inertial frame so if you are measuring like this then you need to convert that into this frame and then calculate the uh, velocity and then calculate the position so there are two ways one is that you measure this and then you uh, uh, calculate the velocities with respect to the uh, inertial frame and then calculate the position the other one is you arrange the sensor on the robot in such a way that this robot's uh, uh, acceleration along the axis of the inertial frame is always measured whatever may be the orientation of the uh, robot you try to measure the uh, acceleration and velocity acceleration or acceleration as well as the changes in the orientation with respect to the axis of the uh, reference frame that is another way of doing that then you do not need to do any conversion of or uh, transformation of the coordinate uh, uh, frame or you need do not need to transfer the velocity from the body frame to the uh, reference frame and this can be done by placing the IMU on a gimbal platform. So, what we do? We place the uh, IMU in a on a platform on a gimbal platform by aligning the axis of the gimbal to the reference frame. Now, whatever may be the change of orientation of the uh, robot, the IMU axis will always remain same because it is on a gimbal uh, platform. So, any change in orientation of the robot will not affect the orientation of the uh, IMU that is basically the gimbaled inertial platform. So, the gimbals are a set of three rings each with a pair of bearings initially at right angle. So, we saw this uh, uh, in the uh, previous case of gyroscopes also. So, there will be a, a gimbal platform like this and uh, uh, the measure vehicles will roll pitch and yaw angles directly at the bearings of the gimbals. And then simple integration of the linear acceleration for position computation because the directions of the linear accelerometer do not change. So, once you place this on the gimbal platform, the IMU on the gimbal platform, and if it is aligned initially with the uh, reference frame, then whatever may be the orientation of the uh, robot, any change in orientation of the robot, the gimbal will actually make sure that the IMU axis are always aligned with the reference frame. So, any measurement that you are getting is directly a measure along the axis of the reference frame. So, you just integrate that and then calculate the position. So, that is basically the, the gimbaled inertial platform. So, here the uh, advantage is that you can you do not need to do a, a transformation of uh, uh, velocities from the uh, body frame to the reference frame. So, the computation becomes much more easier uh, in this case. So, that is why the gimbaled inertial platforms are used uh, in order to get the uh, position and velocity position and orientation of the robot without having too much of computation. So, as you can see here, so you will be uh, 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 arranging the sensors on the platform uh, and the sensors will be along the reference frame axis and so therefore, all the measurements will be with respect to the reference frame. And of course, that the disadvantage is that you need to have a gimbal platform and so it becomes a, a mechanical structure and which need to be placed in a proper uh, place and then uh, you need to maintain that one. So, that is the uh, disadvantage of using a gimbal pl platform, but the advantage is that your computational uh, efforts will be much less in this case. Of course, the other method is to have it on the uh, axis. Okay, so, the, the three gyroscopes mounted on the platform detect any platform rotations and output signals proportional to the rotation angle by the experience about the three perpendicular axis. Okay, so, that is basically how the, the implementation is done. 
So, some torque motors uh, will rotate the gimbals in order to cancel out the rotations caused by external torque so that the platform is always kept leveled. So, you need to have uh, you need to keep all those uh, I mean you need to have additional uh, actuators to ensure that uh, the uh, rotations of uh, uh, the body or the, the robot are compensated using this motor so that uh, the axis are always maintained with the reference frame axis. So, that is what actually needed in the uh, gimbal platform. So, this is having a difficulty as you can see that uh, you need to maintain the, the three gyroscopes in this case. So, the other one, uh, so an easy method is to have the uh, strap down inertial platform. In strap down inertial platform, what we will do, we will uh, have this uh, one accelerometer and one gyroscope along the axis of the robot. Each axis of the robot will have one accelerometer and one gyroscope and uh, it will measure the acceleration as well as the gyroscopic uh, movement or the, uh, the orientation changes uh, or heading change can actually be uh, measured with respect to the robot axis and then what you do you just uh, transform this uh, to the reference frame body reference frame uh, from body reference frame to the uh, initial reference frame and calculate the velocities and then calculate the change in position. So, that is what actually done in the strap down inertial platform. Okay, so, there are no moving parts. So, three accelerometers for measuring acceleration, three gyroscopes for measuring the angular velocities. So, it has got many advantages. Okay, so, uh, there is not much of no additional uh, actuators for maintaining the axis orientation and uh, that is for low power consumption, reduced cost, etcetera. Uh, only thing is that it require more complex computation. So, you need to have more computation in this case because you need to transform the velocities uh, in the inertial in the mobile frame to the inertial frame and they are more commonly used nowadays considering the uh, requirement of less power and uh, uh, less complexity uh, strap down inertial platform is uh, preferred compared to the uh, gimbal uh, platform. So, that is the way how the IMUs will be used in a, in a mobile robot to get the uh, position and orientation. Okay, so, these are the typical performance characteristics of course, uh, this keeps changing every year you will be getting better and better one, but uh, in general uh, uh, you can actually get a range uh, of uh, uh, okay, that is the uh, vibrating cords and then silicon these are different uh, types of uh, accelerometers a pendulum type or vibrating cords or silicon type. And uh, you can see the bandwidth is around 400 in this case okay, here also 400 hertz this is. Uh, 100 hertz. Normally, most of our applications uh, 100 hertz may be sufficient. Similarly, for gyroscopes also you can see uh, the range, then the bias and then the scale factor and the bandwidth also here. So, you can see the bandwidth is of 500 and MEMS is uh, more than 100 again which is uh, quite sufficient for most of our applications. Okay. Uh, that was about uh, uh, the accelerometers and how the accelerometers and uh, uh, gyroscopes can be combined to get the position and orientation of a robot as the robot moves in a, an environment. And uh, most of the time we use that one to get the position of the robot or to say we want to localize the robot or we find its uh, current position. We use that method of uh, dead reckoning where we use the uh, encoders or accelerometers and then try to find out the position of the robots. And we know that uh, uh, this will be having lot of errors uh, so it may not be always uh, correct as uh, the robot starts moving after some time you will be having lot of uh, drift errors and this will lead to uh, changes in the actual position and the calculated position. So, many times we can use uh, uh, external uh, means to get uh, the position corrected or we can use some other method to get the actual position of the robot. So, one of the commonly used uh, uh, method especially for indoor environment is the ground based active and passive beacons. So, we can actually have some uh, uh, beacons either passive or active in an environment and then get this information get the signal from these uh, uh, beacons either using a I mean a sensor can be used on the robot and then it will be getting all the information from these beacons and uh, 
by looking at the uh, signals received from uh, different uh, beacons, the robot will be able to calculate its position. So, it can actually localize itself based on the sensors which are external to the robot. So, that is the another way of uh, getting the position of the robot and even its orientation also can be obtained by looking at the way in which the signals are coming from various beacons and how it is received at the robot. Okay. So, it is a, a good way to solve the localization problem in mobile robots. As I told you the localization issue though we can actually get the information using the uh, proprioceptive sensors, it will be having lot of drift er errors. So, this is another way of uh, good way of localizing the robots. So, they are the signaling uh, guiding devices with a precisely known position. Okay. So, these are all at fixed positions. So, with respect to the environment their positions are fixed and therefore, once we know the position of the robot from the, this fixed position, the robot will be able to know where it is. So, that is basically the uh, principle of uh, uh, beacon based localization. And uh, uh, this is not a, a new idea, it has been uh, there for a long time. So, people are, were using uh, uh, stars to uh, navigate. So, by looking at the position of the stars. Uh, there are methods to know the location of a, an object or a, or a, uh, a person. And uh, uh, people uh, use this uh, in many other places like you know, lighthouses. So, lighthouses are uh, like artificial beacons that we at uh, the ports you will see uh, lighthouses. By, so, by looking at the lighthouse and the distance to the lighthouse, the uh, ships will be able to identify its location or the distance to the shore, all those things can be obtained. So, that is basically uh, uh, application of uh, beacons for localization. In olden times itself, people are using this. And even uh, uh, birds will, uh, uh, birds, most of the migratory birds use the location of uh, mountains to or the distance to the mountains to uh, locate uh, its position and then uh, navigate and uh, reach its target. So, it is a, it's a very uh, well established uh, uh, methodology uh, for localization. And even your uh, global positioning system which we call the GPS is based on uh, this kind of uh, uh, princi this principle. So, we have uh, uh, many uh, satellites which actually emit signals from different uh, locations and then uh, at the receiver we will uh, we'll receive the signal from different uh, uh, GP, uh, the satellites, GPS satellites and then using this information we will be able to know our position. So, that is the basic principle of uh, GPS based uh, localization. And this is uh, very commonly used in outdoor mobile robots, but of course, in indoor we cannot really use it because the GPS data may not be available. But outdoor the GPS based uh, localization is a very, uh, very effective and a very commonly used uh, method. So, the basic principle is same. The uh, active uh, uh, beacons which emit signals and the signals are received at the uh, receiver and then based on the received signals you identify the location that is basically the uh, beacon based uh, localization. Uh, if you are using this in the indoor the problem is that we need to uh, establish the uh, beacons uh, in the in indoor in environment and their position also need to be known within the en environment and that need to be uh, provided in the robot, so that the robot will be able to localize. So, there is need, the need to have some changes in the en en environment and uh, for an unknown environment you cannot really use it. This only for a known and uh, uh, well uh, structured environment you can use it, otherwise you cannot really use it. So, as I mentioned the uh, global positioning system GPS is one of the uh, very uh, commonly used. Uh, localization for uh, outdoor uh, robots. Of course, it is not only for robots, even we use our, in our mobile phone also we use GPS to uh, navigate. So, we want to know our own location within a, in a map. We simply use the GPS data and then we look at the map and we try to position ourselves in the map using the GPS data. So, how this uh, GPS system works? So, there are 24 satellites. 24 satellites orbiting the earth every 12 hours at a height of around 20.19 kilometers. So, that is basically the, the satellites. And uh, 4 satellites are located in each of 6 planes inclined 55 degrees with respect to the plane of the earth's equator. 
so there are uh, four satellites uh, uh, 55 degree inclination and the location of any GPS receiver is determined through a time of flight measurement. So now uh, all these uh, satellites are emitting signals. And if you can have a, if you have a receiver, then we can actually get the signal from the uh, satellite, and we can find out uh, uh, the the distance uh, to that satellite. And now, if we have uh, more number of satellites by using the triangulation principle, we will be able to find out our location. So that is basically the uh, principle. Okay. So we need to have this time synchronization between the individual uh, satellites and the GPS receiver. So. Uh, we need to have some kind of a synchronization between the receiver and the satellite because then only we can really calculate the, the time of flight. And uh, uh, we need to, we can get the real time uh, update of the exact location of the satellites need to be there and uh, precise measurement of time of flight is an issue and the interference with other signals. So, these are some of the challenges, but uh, we are able to overcome this uh, and then uh, get the location by uh, overcoming these challenges of measuring the time of flight and exact location etc. So, how is this done? So, as you can see here, uh, we need to have uh, minimum 3 satellite signals to get our position that is for the, uh, the position and uh, one uh, satellite is needed for the, uh, the synchronization. So, with the 4 satellites we will be able to get a approach, we can we will be able to uh, get our position with some accuracy. Okay, so uh, a fourth uh, uh, one for the synchronization is used. So in general, you need four or more satellites. So the the principle is here. You can see that there are satellite one, uh, two, and three, and you will be getting the signal. So if it is a receiver, you are on the on the Earth's surface, you will be getting the signal from these three. Uh, and by uh, looking at these inter uh, uh, intersections. You can have two positions, one is on the earth surface, one is on the, uh, on the space. So, by the ambiguity of this uh, outer space uh, position is uh, once you resolve, then you know there can be only one position where you have the other three signals uh, uh, you are getting. So, that is the way how we can resolve the position of the uh, receiver on the surface of the earth. Now, if you have more number of uh, uh, satellites, you can get more and more accurate position because the there will be only a, a one point which actually give you all the four point, four uh, or five or six satellites joining at one point intersecting at one point so you'll be getting much more accurate positioning uh, when you have more number of satellites the minimum uh, uh, three satellites plus one satellite for uh, time synchronization but the more number of satellites you will be getting more and more accurate uh, uh, positioning information and this is uh, uh, why you see a, a big circle in your mobile phone when you have a number of satellites are less the uh, the phone will say that oh your accuracy is very low so it will show you a big circle saying that okay you could be anywhere in this circle but the more and more satellites you are able to receive then you will see that uh, your accuracy will be much more much better the size of the circle will start ca coming down and you will be getting a very accurate position of your uh, uh, receiver so that is the basic principle of uh, a gps based uh, uh, localization system and it is a very commonly used method now and there are uh, advanced systems also called uh, DGPS, differential GPS also when you have uh, you want to have some millimeter level accuracies or the positioning you can use uh, differential GPS to get the uh, position more accurately. So, it increases the resolution of the GPS. Okay, so that is about uh, the beacon based uh, localization. So, that is one method of uh, localization. Uh, once you have an active uh, uh, beacon, uh, you will be able to get the signal from the beacons and the receiver can actually uh, resolve the position based on the signals it receives. Okay, so, we will uh, uh, stop here. I will uh, continue the discussion on the sensors in the next class. Thank you.